Hello, welcome everyone to our Lifecycle Management 101 session. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I am Sarah. I am joined by Sonali. We're both solutions engineers here at Okta. And Nima is going to be joining us from Mertz Pharma to walk through how they've implemented lifecycle management. As you know, uh, Okta is a public company. And so we're flagging any forward looking statements. Um, we share our subject to change. So feel free to leave uh, to read the safe harbor note uh, in depth at your leisure. A lot of text. Hit us up if you'd like us to email it to you. Uh, to start, this session is meant to be a one-on-one -on -one introduction session to lifecycle management. So we're going to keep things pretty high level. Uh, fair warning, if you were looking to take your lifecycle management knowledge to the next level, we do have some awesome sessions aimed at you. Workflows for lifecycle management is at 1 o'clock today, uh, as well as HR as a master is at 2 p.m. today. Both of those are Pacific time. So definitely suggest you check those out. Uh, but we are going to wax poetically about lifecycle management, what it is, how we got here, and even uh, hear from Mertz uh, how they have implemented it in the wild. So starting at that base level, lifecycle management is the process of maintaining the lifecycle of a user account as it goes from onboarding, through role changes, and through termination. So we're talking across all sorts of different systems and applications like directories. So lifecycle management at all organizations is filled with a lot of challenges. So we've got an explosion of users, devices, and applications. All of those need to be connected, right? Plus, we have different types of users. We've got employees and contractors. Those are going to have different life cycles. Also, our decision-making process isn't just contained within IT. You've got business app owners who are managing applications and deciding who gets access. And finally, we might be working with a legacy identity management solution that can't handle a lot of today's challenges within the cloud. So if you drill down to the technical details of lifecycle management, you quickly find out that onboarding and offboarding users is pretty complex, right? We use the terms joiner, mover, lever to describe the steps in managing a user's life cycle. So in that joiner phase, uh, that's gonna be when a user's created within a source system. That could be many things. It could be an HR system, a directory, even self-created accounts. In that joiner phase, you're gonna wanna automate as much as possible, right? Granting access to those birthright apps. These are gonna be like email, storage, payroll. And in that mover phase, you need uh, to account for all sorts of scenarios. Luckily, we as humans are not a static set of attributes uh, where we do things like get promotions, job changes, profile changes, uh, marriages, last name changes, uh, even temporary leaves of ac access. So temporary leaves of absence. Um, so every organization handles these types of changes differently which is why it's difficult to come up with a cookie cutter approach. And also we have that lever phase, right? How do you handle people who leave your organization? Is this an immediate termination or is it scheduled? Does the terminated user lose all access or should they retain some time bound access to something like payroll? So again, every organization has their own policies for how they handle this. And that's partly what makes lifecycle management so challenging. So let's look at a common scenario to understand where things break down. At many organizations, the HR department is the authoritative source of truth. They're the first to record that new hire's data. They're also the first to record when an employee is terminated. So it, it does make sense for IT to follow the actions of the signals that HR is giving them. The problem is that HR commonly notifies IT about onboarding and offboarding events in very manual ways. So they file tickets, they send emails, transfer file dumps. We even had a customer tell us that they get a sticky note with each new hire's name on it and the applications that they need provisioned. So at the end of the week, IT has a desk full of sticky notes. That's a super manual, disconnected and unsynchronized process, uh, which was super painful. And there are several reasons why this is painful. Beyond that example, manually provisioning accounts doesn't scale. It's really inefficient and error prone. And when you're manually assigning access to applications, it can easily result in security issues. The pain is only going to grow larger as your organization grows, right? It's 
stuff is burdening your IT department and your HR department. If you're only onboarding a few employees a week with just one or two applications, maybe you can get away with this manual process, but as you onboard more employees and you give them access to more applications, things are gonna start to fall through the cracks. And that productivity isn't just limited to your IT team, right? That's also gonna affect these newly onboarded employees. They can't do their work if their resources and applications aren't provisioned within a timely manner. Uh, our vision with Okta's lifecycle management is to manage all life cycles for any identity in any business process. This is gonna start with a single source of truth. So you have to onboard the user somehow, right? And that sourcing the user from somewhere, and that somewhere could be an HR system, it could be a directory, could be a database. You could also have end users entering in their own information on a registration form. You could have a manager inputting that information manually, or you could even have a social login where employees are logging in with, face, with their Facebook account, and that information is consumed within the system. So these are all things that Okta's universal directory can support as a source of that user's onboarding. But Office Universal Directory is much more than just a user store, right? It allows us to consolidate users from various sources, yes, but it also allows us to create our own attributes and extend those user profiles and build out a custom schema. So later, I could do something like attribute transformation, where I can take an attribute from Active Directory, I can manipulate it using the Okta expression language, so it fits the requirements of that downstream application that I want to provision to. So next, we don't want to manually be responsible for every step in that join or move or lever process. It'd be great if we could opt for a more automated approach. So in this diagram, we have Okta sitting between HR and IT. Okta is talking directly to the HR solution and is provisioning and deprovisioning accounts and all of the applications to the right. But you could just as easily, if you want Okta to master from Active Directory, you could configure that. So now I will walk through that in our demo a little bit later. And lifecycle management is handling all types of users' life cycles that are going to be managed differently. So we have those full-time employees' life cycles that might be coupled with an HR system. Um, but a contractor's life cycle might require policies that can set an automatic end date, right? We could also drive access based on a user's context. We could use info about that user's department or region and provision access. And lifecycle management can also automate the process of requesting application access and getting approvals. So for example, I joined the marketing department, super excited about my new job three weeks in, I realized I need access to Marketo and it was not a part of my birthright applications. So I can request a license for Marketo and even be approved by an application administrator. So maybe that's a manager within the marketing department and get access and IT doesn't have to answer that ticket. Makes it a lot easier. So we just looked at automated lifecycle management process. Let's take a look at all of the applications that we can leverage this process with. So because Okta is best of breed, we have a lot of traction in getting best of breed software companies to integrate natively with our product. And that is why Okta's integrations are really much stronger than that of our competition. We're in touch with what's happening with all of those applications that we integrate with, and we provide these out-of-the-box integrations, which are extremely easy to configure, and they just work because we have these best-of-breed companies that continue to keep our partnerships alive. We're constantly getting notified by them of, hey, we've made a code change here. You need to update this on your end. The beauty of it is that you don't have to worry about any of that code. Uh, it's all just a point and click, turn the feature on, you're ready to go we handle everything on the back end. And our catalog of integrations is constantly growing. So you can see this is just the progress we've made since Octane 18. And we've updated our catalog to further allow for easier browsing and deploying of applications. You can sort by HR system that we can master from and have added more types of integrations. So we've taken a look at different applications and how the lifecycle is managed within those applications. Let's see how all that information is recorded. Everything is audited within our system logs. You can see it looks a lot like this slide. So if you have an auditor who's coming on site, you need to know who has access to what, who decided to give them access to that application. All of it can be found by doing very granular searches within the system log. 
so that we have a canned report that you can just say, hey, what does Sonali have access to today? It'll print you out a list of all of those different applications. Very easy. Well, you have heard me yap for quite a significant amount of time. I'm going to throw it over to Sonali, who's going to walk us through a demo of lifecycle management. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Hey, everyone. My name is Sonali Singh, and I'm, I'm a solutions engineer here at Okta. Hope you're enjoying our session here so far. So Sarah did a great job at explaining what lifecycle management really is. But as we know, words aren't always enough. So with this demo, I'm going to showcase everything that Sarah just talked about in terms of what our lifecycle management features are. I'll mainly be focusing on how a user operation gets pushed from a profile master, so in the case of this demo, Active Directory, to Okta, and then to any downstream applications. I'll be leveraging Salesforce, and I'll show you how everything within my Salesforce account gets updated. Now, referring back to what Sarah talked about earlier, I'll be showing you three main functionalities. So starting with the first thing, user onboarding. As a new user or as a new employee is hired, you go ahead and add that user to your profile master, how that information is then pushed from that profile master to Okta and then to those downstream applications. Next, we'll be looking at updating user attributes. So when people move within the organization, um, they get promoted or their information changes. For example, things like their role, their department, their title. Or people have personal life changes. So say someone has moved and we need to go ahead and update their address attribute. I'll show you how all of that can be done in your profile master, synchronized over to Okta and then to all of those downstream applications. And then lastly, we'll be looking at user offboarding. So say when someone leaves the organization, you need to go ahead and deactivate that user. I'll go ahead and show you how that can be done directly in your profile master. And again, how that information can be synchronized over to Okta and then to all of those downstream applications. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and get started with the demo and walk you through lifecycle management in action. All right, so here on my screen, I have my Okta admin console, which allows me to manage my users' applications and security under a single pane of glass. For my profile master, I have my on-prem active directory pulled up here. So as we add my and onboard my new user, all of that's going to be happening within my active directory. You can also use Okta as the profile master, where you can easily create and manage user profiles and groups all within our universal directory here. Now, I know I've used the word profile master a lot, and some of you might be wondering, what does she mean by that? Well, profile master is essentially your source of truth. It can be thought as that top level directory that's used to validate any user information, and it's what's going to be used to perform the CRUD or create, read, update, and deactivate operations. As you can currently see, I'm in my universal directory, which is a cloud-based directory, and I'll show you how profiles within this get updated as I make changes in my active directory. Now, since I'm in my directory tab, I also wanted to pull up my AD integration and tell you and show you how that's been configured. So if I navigate over to directory integrations and into my active directory, in terms of the architecture, Okta has a lightweight AD agent that can be downloaded on any member server, and, it's commun and it communicates outbound to Okta over port 443. If I navigate to my people tab, we can see that I already have some users that have been pulled in from my active directory. In terms of provisioning, provisioning can be configured bidirectionally, so from Okta to AD as well as from AD to Okta. As an admin, you have some configuration options here around how often you want to schedule that import. You want to enable JIP provisioning. You also have some configuration options around user creation and matching, so how that maps, and profile and lifecycle mastering. Another thing I wanted to point out here is 
how attribute mapping works. So you have a certain number of attributes with an Active Directory. You can also go ahead and configure how that information maps over to Okta all within our attribute mapping portion, our section. So from here, I do also want to talk to you a little bit about groups. So if I navigate back to my groups tab here, you'll notice I have a few different tabs types of groups within my Okta tenant here. I have some from applications, some from directories, some are from HR solutions, and I also have some Okta local groups. There are two types of groups that I want to talk to you about in particular. So the first one is my every one group. Anyone who's added to my Okta tenant by default is a part of my everyone group. If your organization has any birthright applications or applications that everyone needs access to, you can also go ahead and assign that to this group. And as users are onboarded, Okta can automatically go downstream and assign those applications to them. So the first day a user starts, they're all set to go with the applications they need access to. The second type of groups are those that are only accessible to a particular set of users. So let's go ahead and take a look at my sales group, which I have created here. This is obviously particularly for my sales team. Anyone who's a part of my sales team should be added to this group. I also have some applications which I have assigned particularly for my sales team here. So essentially, if we look at it, what I want Okta to do is when a user is being onboarded, Based on certain attributes, I want them to automatically be assigned to those appropriate groups and applications that they'll be needing access to. Now you must be wondering, well, how can we do this? Good question. The way this can be achieved is by leveraging group rules. These rules automate that entire group and app assignment process. So if you can see here on my screen, I have a few different rules that I have created, but if we were to dive in deeper into a particular rule, let's say my sales rule here, we can see that it says if a user's organization is equals to sales, then go ahead and assign them to my sales group. Now this rule is fairly simple, but we can get pretty granular with these, so really allowing you to customize it to fit your need. Now, from here, I also want to talk to you a little bit about applications and how that configuration can be set up. So I'll go ahead and navigate over to applications and pull up my Salesforce instance that I have configured. If we go ahead and look at it um, in terms of settings and sign-on methods, I have SAML configured for my Salesforce here. Um, I've also gone ahead and enabled provisioning. Again, this can be done bi-directionally. But from Okta to Salesforce, I've gone ahead and enabled my create, update, and deactivate options here, which means I can perform all of these actions in Salesforce directly from my Okta tenant here. I do also have my Salesforce instance here. So as we make changes, we're going to be checking Salesforce to make sure all of those changes have been pushed over to Salesforce. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started by onboarding a new user. I have a new hire, Sarah Farnsworth Kumli, who's joining my sales team as a solutions engineer. And as you can see here, I've already gone ahead and created a profile for Sarah. I've gone ahead and added all of the information I wanted to in her profile. So let's go ahead and import her over to Okta now. If you remember from a little bit earlier when I showed you my AD configuration, I have scheduled imports set to every hour. So Okta will check every hour to see if there have been any changes in my AD and it will import over any new information. If we were to wait for the next import, the information and the profile I created for Sarah would be imported over and pushed to Okta automatically. But for the sake of this demo and everyone's time, I'll go ahead and do a manual import. If I go ahead and hit import now, oops. it might take a few seconds, so we'll, we'll just let that import happen, but let's go ahead and see if that information gets pushed over. So as I can see here, it lets me know one new user was imported. If I look at my list of imports, I see Sarah has been imported, so let's go ahead and confirm that assignment. 
And now that we've confirmed her assignment, let's navigate back over to my universal directory to make sure that Sarah is indeed an active user. We see that Sarah is here. Um, I notice that Sarah has all the applications that she needs access to. I also noticed that she, the profile master is Active Directory, so Okta does let me know what my profile master is here. If I navigate over to groups, uh, I can see that Sarah is not only a part of my everyone group, but based on those group roles that we had created earlier, she was added to my sales group as well. Now, if we take a look at her profile, we noticed that all the information I had filled out within my Active Directory did get pushed over to Okta. And so at this point, we see that Sarah's profile has been created within Okta. All of that information has been pushed over, but let's go ahead and check Salesforce to confirm that Sarah is indeed an active user. So if I navigate over to my active users, we can see that there has been um, an account that's been created for Sarah here. And now when she starts, she'll be ready to go ahead and use Salesforce at that point. If I go ahead and click on Sarah's account here, we can also see that her pr profile information has been populated over as well. Now, from here, let's go ahead and take a look at that next step. So a few months down the line, Sarah's doing amazing at her job. She's getting promoted to a manager role because she's doing so well. And she's had some exciting personal life changes as she recently got married. What I want to do at this point is update Sarah's profile to reflect these changes. So let's go ahead and do that. And I also want to go ahead and update her email. And then we'll go ahead and update her title too, as she's a manager now. Let's go ahead and save these changes and go back to our, our AD integration and do that manual import again, just so we can push that information and see that update right away. So we'll go ahead and do that import. As we can see here, I have an existing user that has been updated. Now let's go back over to my universal directory and see what those updates are. So that's the wrong Sarah. So if I come in here, I notice that Sarah's name has been updated along with her email. I can see that she's been assigned to a new set of applications. If I go over to groups, I see that she's still in my everyone group, but instead of my sales group, she's been added to my sales manager group. In her profile, we notice that her title has been updated to a manager of solutions engineering. And then if I navigate over to Salesforce and refresh this page, we can see that the information around her username has been updated along with her title and department as well. So all of these information was not just pushed to Okta, but also to those downstream applications. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that last piece. So a year down the line, everything is going great, but Sarah has this brilliant idea that she wants to start her own company. Unfortunately for us, that means she's leaving and we need to deprovision her. So I'll go ahead and delete her account in my Active Directory here. And I'll go ahead and do that last import within my AD integration. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to import and do that import here. It might take a few seconds again, so we'll just let it finish up. While we wait, we can see that one user has been removed. If I navigate over to my universal directory and search for Sarah, we see that her account has been deactivated. All the applications she has access to has been revoked. If I go over to Salesforce and refresh Sarah's and refresh this page, we notice that Sarah is no longer an active user here. So when she tries to access her Salesforce account, 
the, that access will be denied. So at this point, you've seen how lifecycle management works in action. You've seen that onboarding, updating profile, and deprovisioning piece or offboarding the user. And it's great that we can automate the life cycle of the user, but another important thing is gaining that visibility of all of these actions that were just performed. And this can be crucial from an admin or a security perspective. So Okta does provide you some reports. If we navigate to reports, we notice that there are some out of the box reports as well as our system log here. Our system log records each action that's been performed in Okta. You can also dive in deeper around each action to get more granular in those details. And if you're using a SIM tool such as Sumo Logic or Splunk, you can easily pull all of this data into that using our events API or download it as a CSV. At this point, I know you've heard the Okta story, but now I'd like to hand it over to one of our current customers, Nima from MERS Pharma, to tell us a little bit about what their struggles were and how lifecycle management helped them. So over to you, Nima. All right, thank you, Sonali and Sarah. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Nima Tatsade. I'm part of the MERS Global IT team and responsible uh, for Okta globally. And um, today I would like to share um, our journey where in regards of li identity lifecycle management uh, with Okta. So first I would like to give you a um, brief overview about MERS and also um, show you the partnership between Okta and MERS. Further on, I'm gonna present you the challenges we faced before utilizing Okta and also um, go through the journey with Okta in regards of identity lifecycle management. And further on, I would like to show you the benefits um, um, and review the journey. And uh, last but not least, um, go through the lesson we learned through that journey. Great. So MERS is a global family-owned um, healthcare company. Our vision is to become the most admired um, trusted and innovative aesthetics, therapeutics, and consumer care company. We have a global workforce um, of more than 3,000 employees and have um, globally um, 34 uh, subsidiaries in Americas, Europe, and Asia Pacific. Um, we started um, partnering with Arcta in 2017 and um, we are rolled out Acta for our employees, customers, and partners. Um, we are utilizing Acta for our central and strategic services, uh, which includes um, also single sign-on, adaptive MFA, um, identity uh, discovery provider, and lifecycle management, of course, and um, many, many more um, services in regards also in regards and, sorry. <laughs> We, we are utilizing Acta. We are utilizing Acta for central and strategic services, including single sign-on, adaptive MFA, identity discovery provider, lifecycle management, and uh, many more security features which Acta provides. The challenges we, uh, we faced before utilizing Acta um, was one of them was um, the decentralization. The challenges we faced before utilizing Acta was um, decentralized identity management. As we are um, um, working in a global environment, we had multiple systems where identity were managed, and it was um, hard for us to maintain uh, them. It was really um, um, linked with a lot of uh, internal effort and manual effort to keep them updated, to manage them, to monitor them. And furthermore, it was also frustrating for a lot of users that as they had multiple accounts for multiple platforms, and um, they, um, it caused also a lot of frustration as they keep forgetting the username, the password, and their URLs to each system, uh, which also caused a lot of um, costs uh, as they um, opened a ticket for each of these cases. Um, Furthermore, um, as part of the onboarding and offboarding process, um, a lot of in, in manual in, uh, effort was involved, and uh, which which um, cost, or cost also a lot of uh, internal effort, 
and it causes also uh, inefficiency. Furthermore, uh, in regards of the policies and standards we had in place, as we had multiple platforms, um, there were no um, global standards. We had to maintain each policies for each um, um, specific system, and um, it was hard to have an, a global overview of them. And as um, we also uh, want to ensure that uh, we provide best service to our partners, customers, employees, it was difficult as um, to, to ensure the scalability and availability of systems. Um, furthermore, also the interfaces and integrations into each systems and platforms and upcoming projects was also challenging for us to ensure that this is given. And um, that's, that was one of the challenges we faced. And um, last but not least, the security and compliance as, um, as we need to ensure that, especially when we are dealing with identities, we need to ensure that we provide a secure solution. And um, it was, it was uh, really difficult, challenging to ensure that um, we have an, we're monitoring all the systems, we keep all the systems up to date. Um, and patch all the systems and make sure they are secure. Um, it, was, it was one of the uh, pain points we had before utilizing Arcta. Right. So based on these challenges, we identified that we need a um, strong identity provider, uh, which can act as um, backbone of our infrastructure. And therefore we start working with Arcta. And, um, Together, we identified um, a strategy and a journey for our identity lifecycle management. And um, we split this journey into different phases. The phase one, we focus on our customer and partners. And um, as you can see here, um, we do provide a customer portal, which is based on a Salesforce uh, platform. Um, and we provide a lot of services on this portal. Uh, with Arcta, we are able to provides uh, life cycle management and single sign on and security policies um, for all these um, customers and partners as this platform is connected to our specifically uh, Okta tenant only for our external uh, users and customers. This um, Okta tenant is again connected to our internal um, Okta tenant which allows um, um, single sign on LDAP MFA and many more features only for our employees. And um, again, this tenant is again uh, connected to our Active Directory. And um, if a user from a mer if an employee user colleague uh, wants to access the platform, the cu customer portal platform, um, we can um, do that with the same user journey as there is an arc to arc connection between our internal tenant and an external tenant. Um, and um, Based all these interfaces, it, it makes um, for, for the user very seamless and um, state-of-the-art user journey through, through these tenants. And based on the lifecycle management features and the automation in place, um, um, it provides a great state-of-the-art uh, journey for, for the users and customers uh, overall. Right. On the second phase, uh, we focus on employees. And um, I need to mention that we are still in progress of implementing that, um, um, this, as this is still going on. But the goal is, um, as, as we just learned earlier, we are talking about joiner, mover, and lever. And um, the, the idea is to um, um, implement a process and automation and workflow um, that help us um, to reduce the internal effort as, as a joiner comes in and we provide a access which uh, is required, uh, deploy the policies, enforce the policies, and um, gather all the attributes which are probably maintained in multiple systems into uh, under one umbrella, bring them together. And if there isn't any update, make sure it is deployed and um, accurate. And if the colleague leaves the company, we go through the offboarding process and they provision the account. And um, as Okta, as we also learned earlier, provide a huge uh, repository as Okta integration network. Um, it, it brings a lot of out of the box solution and interfaces. And um, if this is still not um, um, enough and sufficient, uh, we still have the opportunity to create our own interface with global standards like SAML 2.0 and many more. 
which is really helpful as, for example, we have a lot of on-prem um, solutions uh, where we can um, implement that with a customized interface. Right. Based on the challenge we, we saw earlier and the journey we went through with Okta, um, we can tell that Okta helped us um, to drive our standardization and harmonization strategy um, as, as we are able to reduce a lot of um, old uh, platforms and bring a lot of services into one central place, um, like Password Risk Manager, um, the onboarding process, single sign-on, Adaptive MFA, and also all the security features, and which helps us also to provide one um, identity management uh, standards globally. Um, the lifecycle management and automation uh, allows us to speed up the processes and reduce the internal effort we have, um, which also uh, ends up also to reducing the costs. In regards of the standardization, um, based on Arcta standards uh, and also the, um, the ability to uh, integrate to multiple systems, we are able to roll out and deploy a global standard. Further on, as, as our priority is to focus on our customer and need to uh, provide and ensure that the services we're providing are highly available and the scalability is always there, uh, we can um, count on Arcta service as it's uh, really reliable and um, it is um, adjusting to our requirements. As uh, mentioned earlier, we, one of our requirements is to ensure that um, all the current platform and upcoming platform um, are able to connect to the current environment and based on um, best of breed approach, uh, which Arcta uh, provides, um, as, as mentioned earlier, the Okta integration network or the partnership with other uh, big software vendor, we are able to ensure that um, all the upcoming uh, platforms are able to, uh, to connect to, to Okta and our policies and global standards. And um, um, also in one of the biggest uh, points for us is the security and compliance as we are working in a, a regulator, uh, regulatory uh, environment. And, um, on the one hand, we, with Arcta, we are able to increase the security and, um, and compliance. On the other hand, also to improve the user journey based on single sign-on and um, state-of-the-art um, security. Furthermore, with Arcta, we have um, the possibility to increase companies' visibilities uh, to, into systems and um, have an overview of the reports and all the access um, which, which are uh, right now more visible and allows us to, um, to act faster. Also based on Arcta's uh, global network, uh, we are able now to see uh, threats uh, which other customers probably see and we can protect before we, gonna, we, we, we face them. As, as mentioned earlier, um, customer journey and satisfaction is a high priority for us. And with Arcta, um, we have the possibility to um, um, continue focusing on that as Arcta is taking care of the security and identity lifecycle management for us. And also providing the security and uh, single sign-on state-of-the-art user experience. Um, we still can um, provide both um, services and make sure um, everything is um, available and um, secured. Um, based on the automation and uh, lifecycle management provided by Okta, we are able to reduce the internal effort and reduce the costs as there are um, services like password reset management, the onboarding pr process and offboarding process, and many more services which are um, in the back uh, without any additional internal effort. Um, based on the centralization and um, also the simplified complexity approach by Arcta, we're able to harmonize and standardize our infrastructure and also um, proceed with our IT strategy and go um, further with the cloud strategy. And um, our, our value is to persist in innovation, uh, commit to customer colleague and deliver trusted results. Therefore, we need to uh, ensure we are working with reliable and trustful partners. And with Arcta, we have a partner um, where we can rely and trust on. Thank you very much. At this point, we've talked about what lifecycle management is. We've seen a demo and we've heard from one of our current customers. But I'm sure you must be wondering, 
what's next? What else can I do? Well, in the spirit of Okta's mission to connect everything, here's a preview of the next level of life cycle management. I'd like to introduce to you Okta Workflows, which enables customers to build identity-centric business processes without writing any code. A workflow starts with a trigger or an event, something like, when this happens. Next, you can add some logic like, if this, then that function. And say I want to go deeper and perform an action within an application, like assign a territory within my Salesforce app. I can go ahead and add that. And to tie it all together, finally, I want to chain all of these actions and at the end, send an update to my Slack channel and to my user, welcoming them to the group and letting them know what's going on. I can finally add that piece. So Workflows really helps us chain all of these pieces together with a few clicks. And if this is something that you're interested in, definitely be sure to check our workflow session out at 1 p.m. today. With that, I'd like to pass it back to Sarah to wrap us up. Fantastic. That was a great plug uh, for our workflow session. Um, but bringing it all the way home, simplifying lifecycle management to its core, it's going to provide very clear joiner, mover, lever paths. And all you have to do is click a checkbox to enable those creates, updates, and deactivates, making it very easy to provision accounts to applications. You saw Sonali walk through the demo, helping you automate the full process. And with that, I wanted to thank Nima so much for joining us, as well as all of you for this Lifecycle Management 101 session. Hopefully we've learned a lot. Um, and if you wanna learn more, as another plug to throw in at the end, uh, we have workflows for Lifecycle Management at one o'clock today, as well as human resources as a master, exactly to what Nemo was speaking to uh, at 2 p.m. today, both of those specific times. Thank you all so much for joining us.